Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We got the building up, we got the framing done, and it is time for a steel roof. So I've done videos on metal roofing, so uh, you guys will notice tons of chains. You've got chains on the walls. These chains are all to get this building squared up, plumbed up, and ready for a roof. Because if you don't do that, if you don't take time to make sure that these guys these post bases are installed straight and square. If you don't make sure that your building is framed up accurately so the dimensions are accurate, you can never get an accurately square and straight roof. So I know I always stress this, but literally the beginning of the job is the most important. The foundation, the layout, because if you don't take time there, if that's not good, you're never gonna get to have a square roof. And why is that important for us? A, because it looks good when you don't have your steel all jagged and you don't see a roof peak leaning one way or the other, but also the closer to perfect that we are when we go up to that roof and it's square and straight, the quicker and easier the install is. And that's what today is all about. Today's goal is to get all this metal laid on this roof. I've got Greg up there getting fall protection ready. Got my son Cole here. It's his, I think it's his last free summer break day. So I said, you're coming to work. It's roofing day. He loves putting the harness on. So let's go ahead and get some metal roof on. All right, so speaking of straightening, right? We got all four walls plumbed. That's what we use the chains for. We got it locked in. We did our permanent diagonal bracing. And then what that allows us to do is put a string line from one corner to the other corner. And string lines, as long as it's not super windy, they don't lie. They're gonna give you a straight line to make sure that your fascias are straight. So in stick frame, a lot of times guys will plumb their walls, straighten their walls, then they will snap a line and cut their tails off for their fascia. Post frame doesn't really work like that. You can do it, it's a lot harder, and in my opinion, not as good a quality because it's kind of one of those things that I, I've thought about how to explain, and uh, if you pre-assemble your tails or if you try to straighten a wall out, then snap a line and cut it, most likely it's gonna move before you get it secured. So what we like to do is we like to get everything measured this is a one foot overhang so we can measure that off the wall set our overhang then straighten the overhang so now this whole wall is locked in on the string line with all of those chains that we put down there on the wall so with that we can then square up the wall or the roof to this eave which we just did um, i'm not going to go into all that today guys today we're just looking to get metal roofing on if there's a part of this process that really confuses anybody, if anybody wants a dedicated video on preparing a post frame for a roof, let me know and we will think about that because we've got quite a bit of shops and uh, roofs to put on the rest of this year and we can make that video happen. Here Cole, you can start winding that sucker up. I'm going to start laying some trims out and uh, Everybody stay on this side of the lift, okay? <laughs> it definitely got a little. I don't think anything bad's gonna happen, but just in case. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm scared. I'm just saying, just saying I'm that I'm gonna be very nimble. And we need our filler strips. What up, car? Don't know who you are? I don't know, dude. One of your fans. Okay, so we've got our drip edge. This is gonna go just like so. All right, so Greg is three foot four up top. That's the, that's the layout we wanna start with because we want our ribs to line up with our ribs down on the wall. So by doing three foot four for our first piece, supposedly that'll put a rib, yes exactly on the corner which is what we've we are planning on the wall as well layout's important we've talked about it um, just know that if you don't lay out your metal panels you most likely will will have an issue at some point so as long as you get your layout and then you make sure that every three foot you have a mark from where you want to start you should end where you want to end all right cole filler strips dude let's see if you remember how these go A little bit off the trim, there you go. Yep, and then this guy, 
goes all the way to the center. The only reason I have that other mark is so that I know where the edge of my sheet goes. Don't mess up, man. I don't want to fire you on your last day of the summer. When you're ready, Greg, you're gonna come over here. I should be able to turn it if you want to go over there on that end. All right, time to turn and burn. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, nope. Just like that, so I can get in a better position to pick it up. Go ahead. There we go. No scratches. First sheet dictates everything, so we want to make sure that we are square and dimensionally where we want to be, which is an inch and a half overhang and on the edge of our first mark. Okay, you on your mark? Yeah. Inch and a half, look at that. Dang, that's perfect, dude. Now we just need to make sure that we mark where every purlin location is. So we can come back and screw it and hit all these purlins. People always ask about how we can, you know, do this with an alternating staggered purlin. Um, we just mark them all. That way we know where the purlin changes and uh, we'll come back and screw it all later. But the goal is it's calm, it's a nice morning. We want to try to lay out as much of this steel as possible. You know, I woke up this morning, I'm gonna do a little complaining right now. And I, my dog was really like in my area of the bed. Yeah. So like I was crunched uh -huh. and I was laying on my side Ooh. and my hand has been my right shoulder. And guess what? A little bit. Guess what? Roof day. Not only roof day, but what shoulder has to lift all this weight? <laughs> Ugh, it's my right shoulder. I just gotta get warmed up, you know? Oh yeah, dude, nice work. Okay, so now we're just gonna go ahead, since we already know this is inch and a half, we're gonna make sure that we're flush. Put a screw in, come over here, and this is where we have the ability to straighten our fascia because every eight foot is a post, but in between we just have fascia that can be in and out. You know, wood's not good. It's not perfect, wood is great, uh, but you know, we're kind of lucky because we're exactly an inch and a half. So that's exactly where I want it. So I can go ahead and screw it. But we'll find one that's not good. And I'll show you what we do to make sure that it is good and that our fascia stays straight. So we're just gonna kind of eyeball. We don't wanna punch or uh, drill our roof because as you've seen how we kind of get the steel off the pallet, that would literally tear up my hands or catch on things or scratch the roof. If there's little, you know, chunks of metal or something sticking out where we punched or drilled. It's gonna be easy, buddy. Yeah. All right, let's get that shoulder warmed up. And you're off. Gonna run, see if I was running my hand down this panel and there was a bunch of punch holes or drill holes, it would be miserable. But it's just as easy to mark and then screw from line to line. Like if you can't do that, I, I can't help you. Oops. Boom. I mean, that's an inch and I don't know, 17, 30 seconds. Go ahead and take it back a little, Greg. We'll show them. So what we're gonna do is have Greg move that steel back. So he's taking his end of steel and he's pulling it backwards, which is in essence alternating this down here to an inch and a half. So what I can do now is screw this face on and then when he pushes it back, it will flex this wood fascia to be right where it's supposed to be. There, so he just moves it right back. I stay inch and a half, inch and a half, and that is gonna straighten out this fascia. All right, buddy, you ready? Yep. Let's get Greg to get, when he comes back down, he'll get you some fall protection on, and uh, I'm gonna go, I gotta get my snips. 
All right, so while I go ahead on the lift, the boys are off in fall protection and they're just going ahead and trying to get as much screwing done while I prep the next section of roof. So it always is kind of the same process. I've got my drip edge. So this is a custom drip edge that we have made so it sits exactly on top of the two by and then comes down an inch and a half with this drip. And this, this is where the gutter is gonna get tucked under. Now, I'll be honest, my gutter guy, gotta love Scotty, he hates this trim because when he comes up here and puts his gutter in here, we do these in one piece up to 80 foot. So he might two piece this roof since it's 82 feet. I leave that up to his discretion because he's the one that has to stand behind his product. But with a black gutter at 82 feet, aluminum, depending on the day that he is installing it, it can have an extreme um, expansion or contraction, you know, depending on the weather the next day and the next day. So the seasons will change what he does on uh, one or two pieces. We've actually done a 200 and 260 foot one piece gutter because he wanted to try it and we ended up actually uh, tearing it down and redoing it because on a hot summer day it buckled and there was four points where the gutter, it just, it just crimped out and it looked like garbage. So our client called us and we knew that it might happen, but we wanted to give it a try. And uh, you know, that was the lesson learned, you know, even if it's cool, doesn't mean you can always do something if the product limitations are there. So um, that being said, gutter gets tucked under here, our fascia gets tucked under here. And now what I can do is I'm just gonna set myself a nail on the edge of this first sheet that is right on my mark. And we're just gonna redo this process again. I'm gonna hook it. I'm gonna mark 36 inches. And I'm also marking an inch back because that's where my uh, filler strip goes. So we're just marking three foot increments all the way down the line. So it's kind of nice. They can get as much done as they can and they can stay busy while I'm just ahead of them prepping. Always make that nice snip. And that is so this piece can overlap and go right into that uh, open hem, just like so. Just gotta be careful on this so I don't rip my hand open. I probably should have a glove on to be honest. I might, I might take one for my right hand. Right there. Sometimes we get that exactly right there where the middle of this can have a bow. We know the tails of our trusses are good because of the string line, but eight foot two by sixes or the eight foot span can have some bows in it sometimes. So I go ahead and screw it off and then Greg can move it right to his, yep cool cool but if you look down this line I mean that's gonna be pretty darn straight the steel edge will stay pretty darn straight This is where we hit a purlin chain. So we've got an alternating purlin. This is where they're staggered. So all we do is Cole is taking a, a pencil. We're marking an arrow the direction of the purlin. So the top purlin, we just put a slight little arrow pointing forward. And the bottom, you only really need one arrow. That way you know which one is going which way. But uh, so we're going to mark both purlins. And then we know the sheet going this way is going to be on the top purlin, the sheet going this way is on the lower purlin. Uh, you want this rock wool glove? Yes, give me that. Is that a right hand? Yeah. yeah take this, take that tiny glove. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little bit bigger. There we go. Much better. If it goes through this, I'm probably really getting cut, you know? That's the only downside. Oh. 
it's hitting this sheet pretty hard. One second, one second. So this two by 12, if you're wondering what the heck it's for, um, we had a heck of a time straightening out this end wall. It was kind of all over the place. And sometimes when that is the case, it is easier to just take a couple two by 12s. We screw them to the purlins on our truss line. So all of these purlins, they have a truss line. And that's what we used to line them up with the outside edge of the truss. So we take a couple good two by 12s we screw it at the bottom and then every purlin on our way up and all we do is like in this case i screwed it greg then at the top of the 2x12 he can push and pull the top to move it to the line on every purlin and then i screw them as i work my way up what happens is when the truss is laying on the ground for you know a few days or whatever it can develop whatever whatever imperfection the ground is, is what the truss develops. So when we install it, you kind of see it in the purlins and the end fascia. And this method right here is a really nice way to just take all that away. But you'll notice we've got like a six foot overlap where our two by 12 and our top two by 12 overlap. That's about six foot. If you don't have a good overlap, it doesn't work as well, but even so, when you get these two by 12s on, wherever you see that your, if your wall has like a bow to it, we can put a chain at the worst part of that bow, pull it back, and because these two by 12s are installed to every purlin, it just brings everything all at once versus putting chains on random purlins throughout the roof to try to push and pull it. Hopefully that makes sense, but Greg is down there uh, getting as many screws as possible in that first bay because as soon as we start pulling these screws we don't want it to go back and i know people are going to say well doesn't all that tension doesn't that cause problems later on all of these screws are going to hold it in place and it's going to just naturally stay in that exact position it's kind of like uh, bending wood for furniture right people bend wood they put it together for a chair leg or something it doesn't continually sit there under stress it it stays where it's at so um, we're gonna make sure that we got enough screws and then before we put this last piece on uh, we'll, we'll make sure it's solid. We'll take these off and then we'll do that But we're already down the roof. This is going pretty good. It's looking good. It's running pretty well um, The only thing that's bothering me is this wind is Really pushing the sheets down and giving my shoulder a heck of a time because I got to reach out and pull this one up So I'm gonna make sure when we go to the other side. I'm gonna use my other shoulder that way I can do damage to both of them, not just one. Hmm, that's a tricky one. All right, buddy. Let me turn it. Don't touch it. Okay. Is that a bug? No, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> Get off of the a mosquito, man. Fair <laughs> enough. Okay. Well, one side down. Boys are going to stay up there and start getting all the screws done. And I'm gonna move over to the other side, try to make sure everything is nice and straight, get it prepped, and then I'll call them over and we'll start laying the other side. I'm trying to figure out why there's still like six sheets of steel here because typically two bunks of steel, one for each side of the roof. And either I ordered it wrong, they stacked it wrong, or something. 
I don't know, but it's kind of weird that we have like five sheets left. Anytime you're picking up long steel, it's not easy if you just fork it in the middle. So what you do is strap it. And as these straps pull up, it's gonna curl it like a taco. And once you get the curl, you could, I mean, you could pick up a mile long sheet. Mile, maybe three quarters of a mile. I don't know. We haven't done a roof that big yet. Nice, Greg. All right, second bunk, last bunk, only two bunks. I don't know why they did this to us, but they put 33 in the first bunk, 23 in the second bunk. Usually they would split those in half. There should have been, I think, 28 in each, if that makes sense. Yeah, we're rocking and rolling now. We might get this done by lunchtime. And that's the goal, because I said I'd buy if we get done by lunchtime. All right, how's it going on the other side? Done. You're done? Uh -huh. Nice. Way to go. See, it was, it was worth coming. Think all the money you're making, dude. Honestly, we're making good timing. We started about 8.30 or so, and it's just now 12 o'clock, so I think, we're gonna, I think we're gonna give it to them. I think we're gonna give them some free lunch. Even though it's past noon, I suppose some people take late lunches. You never said, you never gave them limit. You just said lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a little bit more. Right there. Last one. Oh, yes. Last piece. Let's see how we did. We got to do a lot of screwing, but it's 10 after 12. So that took us three hours, 40 minutes ish. And that was, we even had to straighten out this side. So I'd say that's a pretty good day for for us, um, maybe back in the day we could have done it faster, but uh, it's not all about speed. Glad you were here, Cole, for it. Greg, um, it's good to have you too. <laughs> uh, couldn't have done it without you, man. Hey, so now, now we're gonna probably Get this a row secured in here real quick. We just like to go through the middle and uh, get one row of screws. Oh, my hand is all nasty. Yeah. Like from the glove, feel it. See how it's sticky it is? It's like so sticky. <laughs> Bro, I can't get my hand out, it's so sticky. Ah, <laughs> my knuckles. <laughs> Come on, Cole, stop working. We're trying to go to lunch. Nice job, guys. I knew, I knew we could do it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Good enough for the girls I run with. All right, guys, that is the roof. We got it all installed. Went and grabbed a quick bite. Uh, boys earned it. I said I'd buy if we got it all installed by lunchtime. They did. We did. And then we came back and we got it all screwed off. So that's a big milestone. Anytime you get the roof on the structure, that's a good thing. One, because it's gonna start shedding rain um, you know, on the building, so now your lumber's not gonna be getting soaking wet. But also, that roof is a key component to having a structural building. So before that roof goes on, there's not a lot of structure. That's why you guys see us with all those chains. Um, but once that roof is on, these X braces that you see behind me are installed. 
it locks everything in. It's a little bit different than a stick frame where you see people sheathe their walls first, then they truss and install their roof sheathing. Post frame's a little different. You get your building installed, framed, then you come behind and that roof is what really gives it its strength. So this is a great day for us. Uh, it's gonna be the end of the day, end of this video. So if you guys enjoyed this, make sure you hit that thumbs up. And uh, if you wanna follow along with this build, definitely make sure you're subscribed down here, hit that little button. But uh, also, anytime you guys have questions, anytime something doesn't make sense, you can always drop it down below in the comments. I read the comments and I definitely appreciate all you guys' support. So we'll catch you guys on the next video. I'm out of here, going home, cleaning up. You guys have a good one.